was around in that tech and yeah. telecom bubble. And what we saw back then were investors and speculators throwing money at anything. Uh, and you might say that the same is happening today. Uh, but if you take out, and, and you just said this actually, if you take out the movers and shakers, the rest of the market is trying to figure out, okay, who's going to win? There are some obvious winners now. Many of the, well, in the private markets, of course, NVIDIA, the chip players, TSM. Uh, in the private world, the large language models, OpenAI, Anthropic, XAI, Gemini is Google, so that's in the public markets. Those are, those are very obvious. What we're seeing today that we did not see back then is uh, founders leaving their companies and uh, lured by Mark Zuck Zuckerberg to become part of an AI machine over there. That didn't happen back then. In essence, these companies that those founders are leaving, uh, they're, they're not going to be the winners. They're not. And, and you know that because their founders have left. But there still will be a very nasty taste if this market cracks. There are so, I guess what I'm saying is technology meets market forces. Yes. Again. Yes. And there's a new generation of people that don't remember dot com boom and bust in the 90s. They don't necessarily remember 2008. And they do think that it's going to keep rising or they, they haven't experienced the force of a market correction. Well, I think that the most seasoned, shall I say, seasoned investors uh, from 25 years ago, uh, meaning yeah. uh, 25 years ago they were in their 20s and 30s, they are, are, they are toward the ends of their careers now. They are teaching. Right. They uh, are teaching the younger people in those firms, maybe not as much in retail, which may be your point here. It's retail that is real. Uh, because but re but retail is more important now because retail is more accessible. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons I uh, founded exactly. ARC, right? Uh, was to be very transparent, to bring these young people along on the journey. Uh, what I think is different this time, and it's very dangerous to say that, I really understand that, having been an investor for many years. In the late 90s, the technologies were not ready costs were way too high. And I'm going to give you a few examples. We did not get the cloud until 2006. We did not get the first real breakthrough in AI until deep learning in 2012. The second one, even more important, that has created generative AI, that's transformer architecture. That took place in 2017. So. We weren't ready for prime time back then. The seeds had been planted. Investors were throwing money at seeds. And a, a lot of those never blossomed, right? Some did, some did. I feel slightly embarrassed asking the next question, but we need to ask it anyway. Oh, do. <laughs> do you see a downturn, a, a market, a major, serious market correction? When you look at valuations at the moment, do you see one near term? So there's a difference between a correction and a bear market. Absolutely, we can see corrections, and I can see a reason for a correction next year. If we are right, and these five innovation platforms are moving us into a productivity-driven boom Ugh. in economic activity, if we're right, what will also happen next year? Interest rates will stop going down at some point because a boom means activity is very, very strong. That may shake uh, some investors up. Uh, they got a taste of this, more than a taste, it was uh, uh, a punch in the mouth. Uh, in 22, interest rates went up and innovation-based strategies crashed. Any long-duration asset, including long-term bonds, went through a horrible time. So some people may, in that transition from falling interest rates to rising interest rates next year, they may get worried. But uh, I, I've been through many cycles. I can tell you that innovation and interest rates are not inversely correlated. They were in 22, 
and that's because of the shock. But interest rates in 2017 and 18 went up. They went up at a measured pace. And innovation-based strategies absolutely soared. Do you worry about the long-term, oh God, this is, a, I, I, this is how long, you know, what's the weather like today type of question, but do you worry about the long-term fiscal health when you've got growing deficits in the largest economy for the foreseeable future? So I started my career uh, during Reagan's early years, uh, and this was the story back then. Yeah. This is deja vu for me. And I remember as a very impressionable young person in the business, uh, this fight. And the right answer was get the economy growing faster, much faster than it has been growing with productivity as the engine. I think that uh, we're in the same story, but it will be turbocharged because uh, the seeds that were planted yeah. by that rev the Reagan revolution, they've been germinating for 25, 30 years. Now they're beginning to flourish. So I think the real GDP growth rates are going to be astonishing. If we're right, if we're right, real GDP growth which ha globally, which has averaged 3% for the last 125 years, is going to accelerate to more than twice that during the next five years. And yet, there's so much fear out there. Yes. This is the opposite of the tech and telecom bubble. That's why this is su sustainable. This is the proverbial wall of worry. Those are the strongest bull markets. They climb a wall of worry and they broaden out over time. And that's what's happening now. Uh, I'll tell you, in, uh, in 2022, we were in a bear market and uh, we were moving, we were concentrating our portfolio towards our highest conviction names, which is what we do during a bear market. Uh, and uh, hedge funds were betting against us, and uh, it worked, it worked. But I think what you're saying is, yes, that was a very painful year, but what we concentrated into is working beautifully now. Which is? Well, uh, all we're focused on uh, is technologically enabled uh, disruptive innovation, uh, that is going to cut across sectors. So the main five innovation platforms are robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, and multi-omic sequencing. Uh, those are the five platforms, and there are 15 different technologies involved in them. Do you spend much time concerned at the perceived and real battle between, say, government and central bank that we've got at the moment in the U.S., between administration and Fed? Or is it just something that... Well, I think one of... One of most people understand that dynamic, but what they do not understand, if they're thinking about fiscal policy and what the administration is doing, most people are thinking about tariffs. That's grabbing the headlines. Uh, I, I think President Trump is a master of distraction. So I do. <laughs> yeah, I, do. I agree. <laughs> uh, so we have tariffs in the headlines every day around the world. I just took a trip throughout Asia, US, and Europe. Tariffs grabbing the headlines. What did not grab the headlines? What did not grab the headlines? And what is astonishing uh, that uh, this administration got through in OB3, the one big beautiful bill, I mean, I... Uh, was a major change in corporate tax policy, major changes in depreciation schedules that are taking the effective corporate tax rate in the United States down from the low 20s to roughly 10%, the lowest in the world. Uh, and, and, and just to give you a sense, this has never happened before. We've never seen uh, depreciation of man manufacturing structures in the first year of service, 100% in the first year of service. Normally that's over 30 to 40 years. These companies are gonna be seeing massive tax refunds that they can reinvest. Finally, I, listening to you, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't want to say you're an optimist. You're a realist, Yes. but you're a realist with an optimistic outlook, which is very different 
to what I'm hearing in a lot of people in your position who are basically saying, not the sky's falling, but oh, looking a bit dodgy. Yeah, no, no, I, we couldn't be more excited. And one of the reasons is what you just said. What's happening now and the results of it, whether it's from a policy making point of view or the, the evolution of the technology is going to be so surprisingly good that the markets are getting it. That's what's happening with the equity markets. They are sniffing out some real success stories here. 